Welcome everyone, this is Mike from ZozoStockWatch.com and this is going to be your Stockwatch list and some information to get you ready for the week ahead. Uh, we're going to keep this an abbreviated video. I do have some company over for some of the holidays, so I'm going to make this uh, pretty quick and uh, short for uh, this week. I uh, just want to say I wish everybody a good holiday uh, and uh, if you're going away uh, for the New Year's and whatnot, um, hope everybody has a safe and pleasant uh, New Year's. And uh, also uh, to my members, I'm very grateful uh, that you all are in my service and a part of my service. Um, and let's hope we can make uh, 2019 a great year and enjoy the uh, holidays with your family and friends. All right, so this is your kind of let's get ready for the week ahead, December 24th through the 28th. Now, as you know, the market closes uh, early on Monday, a one o'clock close. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen. We have a lot of different things pulling and tugging uh, at the market uh, presently. Uh, so uh, markets are closed on uh, Tuesday the 25th for uh, Christmas. Uh, and then we do have a slate of uh, economic information coming out. This courtesy of the trade exchange. Uh, this is the calendar they put out. Uh, I don't see a lot of earnings for the week ahead. Uh, they don't have any listed at all uh, for the week ahead. I think there are some smaller companies reporting, but uh, nothing uh, big or um, any um, large cap companies. Uh, as far as uh, Wednesday day goes uh, we do get the uh, 10 o'clock Richmond Hill uh, oil numbers are going to come out on uh, on a Friday uh, at 11 o'clock so Friday the uh, oil numbers come out and then 1030 the nat gas numbers come out on Friday so they all have been shifted over uh, one day uh, and then here's the rest of your economic info for the week ahead as far as your overnight futures so far, uh, we have the Dow futures down about 56, the S&P futures down 5, the NASDAQ futures down 22. Uh, it's currently about 3 minutes to 7 my time, Eastern time on a uh, Sunday night. Uh, so that's the uh, initial uh, futures opening. They were down a little bit more. Uh, they've recovered a little bit. Uh, some of the things uh, that came out uh, over the weekend and some things, uh, some statistics out there, uh, uh, for the markets, uh, the Dow has lost 6.8% and uh, 1.655 points on the week. Um, it was the worst percentage drop since October 2008. Uh, you can see some of the other uh, statistics. Uh, you know, you, this one is getting uh, pushed around a lot uh, out there. Uh, the, this is the worst performance since the Great Depression, 1931, down more than 12% uh, uh, each this month for the uh, Dow and the S&P uh, 500. So just wanted to uh, show you that. I'm not going to belabor the point. I mean, the markets have been weak uh, and for a variety of reasons. Uh, you have the uh, China uh, trade wars going on. You have the government shutdown. Uh, you know, you're seeing articles like this out there. Brutal. This brutal stock market route mirrors the 1987 uh, crash in one important way. Uh, so that's an article that's out there. Uh, so they're, you know, seeing a lot of this uh you know, these articles uh, out there and, um, you know, uh, not saying take it with a grain of salt, but, you know, the media is always two steps behind. Um, and also they want you to click on their, uh, you know, sites and whatnot. So they throw out, you know, uh, headlines like this uh, to get you to click on there. Now, I'm not saying the markets are not bad. They're very bad uh, right now. We do have a lot of factors. Uh, you have oil that has been down quite a bit. Um, you also have the Fed that has been uh, raising rates. You have a president uh, that's angered angry by uh, angered by uh, the uh, the Fed chairman Powell and uh, there's talk that he wants to fire uh, the Fed chairman uh, so uh, the other some other statistics for the S&P 500 the um, the S&P 500, 176 stocks are down 20% or more. All right, uh, so 20%, uh, 176 stocks uh, in the S&P uh, 500 are down 20% or more. Um, you know, the thing is uh, with the markets, uh, you can get bounces, and we are definitely uh, 
you know, quite oversold at this point in the market. I mean, on uh, the markets on Friday, the Dow fell uh, 422 points. The S&P fell 51. The Nasdaq fell down, fell 195 points, uh, seven days down uh, for the markets now. Uh, big rapid uh, sell-off. Uh, oil is down. Government shutdown. Trade wars. Uh, rates moving up. H hedge funds having to do forced selling. So all these pressures. Pressures are weighing on the on the market. Um, also, now we go into the holiday week uh, with thinner uh, volumes out there. Uh, so uh, we're going to see how this all plays out uh, for the week ahead. Some unusual call activity uh, that passed on Friday. Uh, APHA had unusual call activity. Uh, Ford had unusual activity on the put side. Uh, uh, AT&T, ESV, and AAOI, all unusual put activity, uh, that courtesy of the trade exchange. Let's go ahead and look at some of the news that came out Friday uh, after the bell. HSGX uh, and the FDA conclude, dis uh, conclude discussions regarding uh, one of their phase three uh, clinical trial data. And uh, so that stock on uh, Friday after the bell uh, dropped down to about eight cents. So some bad news coming out there on HSGX. Uh, NASDAQ has its busy biggest uh, weekly percentage drop since November 2008. Um, we had uh, ARES announced acquisition of three Texas wind farms, ARES. Let's see if anything was going on there uh, after the hour. Not really on uh, Friday. Uh, let's see. Trump discusses firing uh, Fed's pal after latest uh, rate hike uh, and that coming from uh, Bloomberg. Uh, you know, some more tweets here uh, from the Secretary of Treasury, Mnuchin, uh, so you can read that for yourself. Uh, we also had uh, ACOR Therapeutics announces FDA approval uh, for one of their products. Um, I believe there's a conference call for them tomorrow at 8.30 for ACOR. Um, we did get some uh, top insider purchases, uh, this coming from uh, the trade exchange. Uh, Dova Directa purchased over 128,000 shares. MRVL, there was a, a Directa purchase. Um, we also had a GSAT CEO purchased over 155,000 shares at uh, 36 cents on that one for GSAT. So that's some of the uh, top insider purchases. Once again, this information coming out courtesy of the trade exchange. ACOR announces FDA approval. Uh, like I said, their conference call is going to be Monday uh, at 8.30 Eastern time for ACOR. We'll just take a quick look at uh, the week that passed uh, last week. Uh, week percentage, we had uh, the VIX up 39%. Uh, we do have a 30 handle now on the VIX. JNUG was up over 12% uh, for the week. Nugget was up over 4%. To the downside, as you can imagine, uh, the services, oil services sector, 13% uh, came out of that. Oil was down uh, over uh, about 11% uh, for the week. IBB was down down almost 11 percent. Uh, K-Web, the uh, China internet stock ETF, was down 9 percent. So as you can see, uh, we had a lot of uh, selling going on. And a lot of it could be forced selling from the hedge funds. Uh, as redemptions come in, they're forced to sell. Uh, the SMH also was down about 8 percent for the week. The SPY itself uh, was down about 7.5 percent. The SPX was down about uh, 7 percent. So the S&P 500 there. Um, I believe the uh, SPY Friday uh, was ex-dividend, so that's why there might be that discrepancy there. Uh, Friday, the SPY was ex-dividend. Ex also, Friday that passed, uh, we had quadruple uh, witching uh, that passed on Friday. So that's some of your uh, markets uh, as far as sector performance for the week. Uh, nothing in the nothing in the green at all. All right, uh, just gets uh, you had the XBI down 14%, the XOP, which is the uh, oil and exploration uh, ETF, down 13% for the week. Uh, you know, if we flipped it up, you know, like I said, there's nothing to the upside here, but the XME was down 5%. Uh, the XHB was up. 
a down 5%. That's the Home Builders ETF. Uh, and then the uh, XLU was also uh, down uh, over 5% for the week. So no place to hide uh, in the week that passed. As far as the Dow Jones uh, 30 stocks, uh, we had WBA, which had earnings last week. That was down 15%. Uh, American Express down 13 almost 14 percent utx down 11 percent and so on and so forth uh, nobody was in the green last week on the percentage wise uh, nike was down the least last week they had earnings and uh, nike did beat earnings uh, and was uh, moved was rewarded and the stock did move up uh, nke Let's just look at a few stocks so we can see the uh, selling that has been going on. Uh, you have NVIDIA uh, down uh, down to about 129 Stock was up at uh, over $280, uh, now trading at $129. Uh, Apple, this is a monthly chart that you're looking at right now. Uh, Apple was up there at uh, you know, 225 area, 233 area. Stock is currently trading at uh, 150 on uh, Apple. Amazon uh, stock dropped from uh, you know about that over 2,000 level down to 1377 so as as you can imagine you know there's a lot of stocks like this and uh, trying to catch falling knives uh, not the best thing to do what we're doing at the service right now since we're a day trading and swing trade service um, we're just concentrating on day trading right now swing trades are pretty much off the table now I will say this I did try uh, a small swing trade on uh, Friday in uh, Microsoft and uh, was quickly uh, stopped out but I did it with small shares it was just kind of a, a little test for me uh, so I got in uh, Microsoft on uh, Friday at uh, around uh, as it got above 100 all right so right about here right I figured you know there was this washout let me make this chart bigger for you so I thought there was this washout at around uh, $98 a share then it started to move up so I said all right if this thing breaks up over 100 let me try you know a, a, an intraday day trade slash swing trade on it uh, so I did try it and uh, we quickly sold off I was using $98 as my stop as you can see we came right back down and broke through it and uh, so that was pretty much the market on Friday just a lot of selling everywhere thought this was the bottom right here on this spike down on uh, Microsoft and I said okay I'm just gonna let it consolidate a little bit and let's see if we can get another f further push up and uh, tried it just didn't want to go and uh, then the stock moved out so down so that was you know one of those test swing trades like I said I only took it with small shares um, but did not work we'll see uh, if tomorrow is a little bit better uh, as far as you know uh, maybe a bounce might be in order uh, the markets are very much oversold um, on any kind of uh, you know dynamic that you use or indicator that you use but it doesn't mean anything uh, because uh, right now news trumps uh, I'm sorry news trumps uh, technicals okay and uh, we have a lot of political news coming out uh, right now as you can see the CNN uh, fear and greed index is down here at three now I personally think this thing must be down below zero at this point with all the selling going on um, and we just recently got a uh, a 30 handle on the uh, VIX so we do do have a uh, 30 handle uh, on the VIX currently but on the VIX I mean back in February when all that selling was going on with the uh, hedge funds I mean this thing got all the way up to 50 now to me if this was a stock it looks like it's almost getting started here uh, on the VIX right we've been kind of consolidating uh, and now we're starting to break out so if this VIX was a stock uh, you'd have to say that it's just kind of getting started uh, here and you know could be more upside to come into the VIX as the uh, fear increases so as I said right now I'm just going to be looking for intraday trades right now in the service uh, Apple will be on my watch for a possible bounce play uh, ACOR had some news uh, so I'll be watching the reaction in ACOR now they do have that conference call at 830 uh, let's see if this one can muster up any strength for an intraday play uh, ADIL uh, was strong on Friday uh, we actually traded this in the service uh, ADIL 
AIL, so we'll be watching that one. Uh, ASTC will also be on watch. Uh, the volume is a little bit light in this one, but it did move up. Uh, so we'll see if there's any kind of intraday play in this. Uh, keep your eye on some of these gold stocks uh, if the market continues to move down. Seeing some uh, relative strength in uh, names like AUY, uh, BTG has been uh, trying to get up over that uh, 290 area on uh, BTG. Keep an eye on that one. Look at the expanding volume uh, that came into BTG. Uh, another stock I'll be watching is CDXC. Uh, volume 1.8 million shares came into this name. Uh, nice move up. Uh, we'll see if there's any follow through. Uh, JD was actually uh, moving up on uh, Friday. Uh, over 49 million shares traded in uh, JD. So this one will be on watch uh, for tomorrow. JNUG, uh, if Gold continues to move up. We'll keep uh, JNUG uh, on watch. Has that uh, 850 area up ahead. Uh, JNUG, keep an eye on that. MICT uh, was uh, getting a lot of volume on uh, Friday. Uh, looks interesting. Uh, MRIN, we traded this in the service on Friday. Uh, this gave us a nice trade, so I'll be watching uh, MRIN. Now it's definitely a bit extended. Maybe some type of uh, red to green move. MRIN. Uh, watching Microsoft again for a possible bounce here. All right, we are down here at the uh, 300. Uh, sorry, the uh, yeah, the 300 uh, SMA here for Microsoft. So looking to see if we can get a bounce and turn in Microsoft. Uh, you know, depending on how the market is tomorrow. Uh, NVCN, not one that's really in my wheelhouse, but saw it turning up uh, on Friday. Three million shares came into this. It's an under $1 name, NVCN. Keep an eye on that. OBLN uh, gave a nice pop on uh, Friday. Uh, volume came in, almost 10 million shares, OBLN. Uh, team compared to a lot of other stocks has been holding up okay. Uh, we do have this consolidation, this flagging pennant. Uh, so this one will be on watch team. And lastly, uh, WPM has been uh, holding up okay, holding above the five EMA. Uh, it's a uh, silver stock. So uh, we'll see if this one has any uh, further upside in it, WPM. All right, buddy, so that's going to do it for the um, let's get ready for the week ahead and the uh, stocks to watch. Please have a pleasant and happy holiday. Uh, don't overtrade this week. If you can, try to avoid the markets. While Why ruin your holidays uh, with the markets? A lot of traders are going to be away from their desks up, you know, for the next two weeks. I mean, we have the uh, New Year's uh, coming up. Uh, I would imagine volumes are going to stay light. Uh, we'll see what tomorrow um, with that half a day uh, gives us uh, I don't plan on trading uh, a lot tomorrow uh, we'll see uh, when we get a full day Wednesday uh, after the uh, Christmas holiday uh, like I said though I'm expecting a lot of traders to be away from their desks so just keep that in mind don't expect too much from the markets you're probably going to get maybe the first hour hour and a half to trade and then the volumes are going to definitely be slowing down for this holiday week a lot of people traveling and away from their desks all right this is mike from zozostockwatch.com uh, i am running a christmas special if you wanted to try my service uh, down in the description box below there'll be a link uh, for anybody new to my service for nineteen dollars and ninety five cents you could come try our service out for a full month and um, then if you'd like before the month ends you can cancel it and um, hope you'll give us a try all right so i'll put that down in the description code and uh, have a very good week and holidays um, we'll see how the market goes if i'm going to make any more videos uh, check back to the youtube uh, channel to see if we're going to do any more videos uh, depending on the volumes and how the trading is going all right this is mike from zozostockwatch.com happy holidays